you know, I find it quite marvelous that for the first time in recorded history, we're going to have a money system where honest behavior is the fastest route to profit. And, you know, I don't think people understand really how profound that is. Um, you know, this is a system where dishonest behavior, sloppy work, and technical incompetence are never going to deliver better returns than honest hard work. Brendan Lee is the new training and development manager for the Bitcoin Association. His job is to educate developers and create curricula to help people who want to build on the Bitcoin SV blockchain. At the recent Cambrian SV bootcamp for developers in Bali, Brendan gave some seminars on aspects of BSV development. I took the chance to ask him about his new role and how much of a knowledge base there already is for Bitcoin SV. You're listening to CoinGeek Conversations with Charles Miller. So Brendan, last time we talked, you were working for Tokenize, the BSV startup. Yes. And now you've, you, you've got a slightly different kind of role. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually doing uh, two things at the moment. Uh, so what I really wanted to do moving forward was to take my knowledge of Bitcoin and try to get it out to as many people as possible. And two opportunities arose at the same time, both of which would kind of allow me to do that. And so one was a role with the Bitcoin Association as a training and development manager. And so for them, what the role is, is developing curriculum and uh, lectures and, and presenting at, at conferences and things like that uh, to Bitcoin developers uh, who are working within the ecosystem. And the other is uh, as head of technology of FIRE. And FIRE is a management consultancy and a lot of our customers are looking to build on Bitcoin SV but aren't necessarily Bitcoin SV developers. So they're, they're just any old company, they're not into crypto at all necessarily. That's right, yeah. yes. And um, what we're doing for them is showing them exactly the potential of Bitcoin and what they can do with it and then how to implement their project on Bitcoin and longer term uh, to manage resources for them, find developers and things like that. So. And what, what has been your experience of explaining the whole thing to somebody who's coming into it really cold? I mean, how um, difficult is it? <laughs> Especially because of all of the forks and disagreements that we've had and, you know, like there's a bit of a civil war really that's been ongoing for quite a while. I find that part of things very hard to explain to people. But in terms of what Bitcoin is, as soon as you start talking about an honest money system that's transparent, where transactions are instant and extremely cheap and that it's just a money system, I think people actually hear that and they go, wow. I want to learn more. They, when you show them that it's not something that they should be scared of, that it's not something that's to do with dark markets and drugs and, and all of this kind of thing, and uh, explain to them that this is a system that will allow us to keep our money honest, uh, I think people are very drawn to that. And if you have a customer of that kind or a potential customer, yeah. what kind of application is sort of the easiest and the most straightforward for them to implement? Um, that's a really great question. Look, I think, so our customers come to us with very diverse uh, projects and in every case what we are doing is trying to find the best way for them to implement Bitcoin and so with one of our customers they're looking at ways to distribute royalties and uh, what we've explained to them is that with Bitcoin well every transaction can actually pay out to multiple parties and so if you are needing to pay royalties as part of your service provision you actually don't even need to touch that royalty money the artist can be paid by the the content consumer who is is listening or watching uh, listening to or watching that content and and you kind of take one step back and then you just become the platform you take a small piece of that money for being the platform but the fan pays the artist directly and so when you explain it that way and that it's such a uh, a great way for the artist and the fan to come much closer together uh, they really they really get that and and it, I think it, it really shows people the power of Bitcoin uh, I suppose we haven't really quite reached the stage where there are lots of sort of great examples of people using it and saving money and stuff yet. No, not How yet. How far away are we from that, do you think? Um, look, I think we still have at least a year of, of building um, quite, and I don't want to say basic, but most of what's being built today is 
still trying to achieve uh, feature parity with other applications that already exist today uh, that aren't built using Bitcoin. But once we get to the point that they, they do achieve feature parity and start executing features that are in addition to what's already available, uh, we will start to see a moment where, where people start sitting up and listening uh, that you know, if you use this application on Bitcoin, you can earn money really quickly. And once we start to see people going viral on applications like Twitch, and you know, the first person who makes $1,000 by pushing a, a viral video on Twitch, that's going to be a kind of a keystone moment for this because people are going to realize that you know, 100,000 likes on Twitter really is worthless to you as the creator of that tweet. But on Twitch, you become the owner of that and the person that is uh, receiving the benefits of that virality. Brendan's role in the Bitcoin Association is to educate developers. Most of his talks in Bali were way above my head, but I was intrigued by the title of one, R Puzzles, Bitcoin's Dark Matter. At the risk of demanding the impossible, I asked him to explain what that meant. So Brendan, for those of us without a technical background, what is an R puzzle? Uh, an R puzzle is a new type of script that can be applied to a Bitcoin output, which allows it to be spent using a public-private key pair that was not previously associated to the coin. You, you've lost me already, right, okay. but what is the use of that then? Uh, so what that allows you to do is to store tokens or information in Bitcoin addresses without the need of actually putting a coin in those addresses before you can transfer those tokens or information to another user. And what are we going to find that so useful for? Uh, so this is going to greatly simplify uh, the process of creating wallets for handling uh, multiple different kinds of tokens. So you'll be able to have, say, 100 different tokens in your wallet, but you'll only need one actual UTXO, and so that a UTXO is a coin. You'll only need one coin in your wallet to be able to spend any of those tokens. And where did you get all this information from, or is it just sort of out there? Uh, it's kind of out there. Like, I mean, that description is my interpretation of what's already been presented. But yeah, basically, there's not a lot out there at the moment. There was one presentation in Toronto and a couple of papers that came out, but that's basically it. And you've described this as Bitcoin's dark matter. Now, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, so until now, typically all Bitcoin transactions have transferred Bitcoin to an address in the Bitcoin address space. And our puzzle coins kind of exist outside that address space and they float around and it's not until we actually spend them that they interact with the address space. So when you actually sign them with a Bitcoin key pair, you then associate them with an address. But you don't do that until the instant that you create the transaction. And what does R stand for? So R is um, part of the signature that is applied to the unlocking script of the Bitcoin itself. So when you create a signature, there are two pieces. There's the signature itself and R. And what an R puzzle does is creates a script that just removes the signature and some other extraneous information and pulls R out and then you can check that R is a, a particular value and that value might let you do certain things within the unlocking script of the coin. And, and usually that would be to spend that coin, but it could be to enable other functions that are also in that script. So, but a lot of that is, isn't possible today. We're waiting for the Genesis upgrade to really unlock the full potential of script. And uh, there's a lot to be excited about that. So. And you've given a series of lectures uh, yes. at the boot camp. Is there already a kind of body of knowledge about Bitcoin SV that, that people can learn? Um, not really. And, and so part of what I'm doing here is trying to create that. And, and so I've, you know, I'm lucky enough that the Bitcoin Association has, has asked me to do this. And so I've had the opportunity to spend the last few weeks basically scouring um, the internet. I've had access to the researchers at Enchain and, and various other people who have been fantastic in helping me make sure that, that my ideas and understanding of things is correct. But uh, what I'm creating here will uh, basically form the foundation of a, a series of educational resources that we're going to release 
uh, so that people who are new to Bitcoin can come in and learn about these concepts. Uh, and you know, a lot of which are extremely important uh, to understand if you are looking to build an application that works on top of Bitcoin. So. Well, it's quite a nice interactive process, isn't it? Because I noticed uh, at the end of some of what you're saying is, well, this is just what I've discovered, but maybe you can tell me a better way of doing things. That's right. You know, um, I'm working this out as I go along and I have learned so much in the process of putting these lectures together. And um, you know what? What I'm really hoping for is at some point someone comes to me and says, hey, I was thinking about what you said, but here's an even better way to do it. And, and that to me says that I've hit the right notes, I've got the creative juices flowing and people are actually thinking um, along the right lines about what we're talking about. If you look at the developers that are here today, they're working on very different products. Some of them are to do with uploading video, some of them are social media, some of them are getting data on the blockchain. To what extent can you provide a kind of common instruction manual that they will all find useful? Well, I guess uh, the topics of the talks that I'm presenting are in themselves very abstract concepts and, and uh, have to do with the various different ways that you can interact with the Bitcoin network. And so my hope is that there's really something in these for everybody and, and anybody who's building an app will find at least one of these talks very useful. And my idea of success here is that somebody will come up to me at the end and say, you know, something that you said here has caused us to pivot in our business plan and our execution plan because we realize there's such a better and easier way of doing it. You know, I'm, I'm looking to help these guys find the, the path of least resistance. And so by showing them all of these different abstract concepts, uh, I'm hoping that they can, they can see that for themselves. But everybody has to find their own way. And uh, I'm just here as a bit of a guide. <laughs> bit of a well, it seems like you're doing a good job because you're getting a good reaction from the audience. Uh, yeah, I'm very uh, happy with what people are saying. You know, they, they seem to be getting a lot out of the, the lectures. So, yeah, it's been fantastic, actually. So you're talking to developers the whole time and, and to business community people. Yes, that's right. What is your sense of the level of confidence in both the developer community and the, the wider business community? Uh, certainly, I think for the developers here, a lot of whom have been in Bitcoin for, for several years, they really understand the power of what we're trying to achieve here with Bitcoin SV and the, uh, what is going to come next year with the Genesis upgrade is really going to unleash all of the potential that we're talking about um, with these new features like R puzzles and payment channels. But uh, it, for businesses, I think they tend to be a lot more cautious about Bitcoin. It's not something they understand and especially when you have to go in and tell them, look, what you think is Bitcoin isn't really Bitcoin. Bitcoin SV is the real Bitcoin. And they look at Bitcoin SV and there is so much fake news out there. It, it kind of scares them away quite a bit. Uh, but at Fire, we've been lucky enough to find customers who can see through the rhetoric. And when we've explained the potential of Bitcoin and where it's going, they've really got it straight away. And uh, you know they're willing to put themselves out there and be the first. And you know I think that's really great and being having that first mover advantage and being able to show the world what's possible on Bitcoin is is great. And do you think that if I was asking this in a year's time things would be very different or do we need to look at a much longer time scale five ten years whatever? Oh, look you know Bitcoin is the fastest moving space I think I've ever had anything to do with and you know, even six months before now, everything was completely different. And six months before then, everything was completely different. So if you even want to look a year ahead, I think things are going to be vastly different to what they are now. We'll be well into Genesis by then. We'll have had six months to play with uh, the unrestricted, uh, unrestricted feature set of Bitcoin. And I think people will be starting to really get the hang of what's possible with Bitcoin script and, and inside transactions. So. Yeah, I think definitely we're going to see things change even faster. Like we're just, it's going to move up into another gear. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it, you know. And I think that pace of change is going to continue to accelerate because not only will we have access to that unrestricted, unrestricted feature set, but we'll also have a network effect of people who are looking into Bitcoin SV mm. and starting to see people who are making lots of money mm. really quickly and they're going to want to get in on that too. And so we're going to have a tumbling of creative people and developers and business people coming into Bitcoin and wanting to be entrepreneurial and, and using its, uh, you know, the capitalist nature of the system to create 
new and innovative ways to do business. And that's just going to drive things to a whole nother level. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Brennan. My pleasure. Thanks, Charles.